program, we discuss several of the auxiliaries associated with turbines. Now we're going to take a look at a few additional auxiliary systems that are vital for safe and efficient turbine operation. Some of these auxiliaries protect the turbine and some control its speed. The speed of a turbine must be controlled within the limits that the turbine is designed to handle. If the speed increases beyond the maximum limit and is not controlled, the turbine could literally fly apart. On the other hand, if the speed is too low, the turbine won't provide enough energy to drive the equipment. It's also important that the speed be maintained at a constant level during normal operations. Fluctuations in the speed are inefficient. Hunting is the term used to describe the action when a turbine's control system fluctuates while searching or hunting for the proper speed. In addition, the turbine must be protected from operating under abnormal or unsafe conditions that could seriously damage the turbine, the driven equipment, and related systems in the facility. Various turbine protection devices help prevent this kind of damage from occurring. A governor is the device used to control the steam flow into the turbine and maintain the speed at the desired value without hunting. This is an example of a mechanical hydraulic governor. It has a hydraulic system that reacts to changes in the speed of the turbine shaft. If shaft speed increases or decreases, the governor, through a linkage, adjusts the position of the governor valve in the steam chest so that a constant turbine speed is maintained. As you may recall, the position of the governor valve determines the amount of steam being supplied to the nozzles. And in this way, the amount of steam supplied determines how fast the turbine operates. In addition to auxiliaries for regulating speed, there are also various devices used to protect the turbine during operation. The first of these protective devices that we'll talk about is an overspeed trip mechanism. The overspeed trip mechanism is used to protect the turbine from being damaged in case the turbine speeds out of control of the governor. As you may imagine, a turbine that flies apart due to uncontrolled speed can be very costly to a facility. It also endangers the health and safety of the turbine operators. So it's vital that you have some way to quickly stop or trip a turbine if overspeed conditions develop. Generally, if speed goes beyond a certain limit, a trip valve in the overspeed trip mechanism automatically closes to stop the turbine. There are a variety of arrangements for overspeed trip mechanisms, but they all operate on pretty much the same principle. Basically, if the turbine overspeeds, the shaft's centrifugal force will cause the trip valve in the overspeed trip mechanism to slam shut. When this valve shuts, it cuts off steam to the steam chest and stops the turbine. Also associated with the overspeed trip mechanism is a hand trip lever that the operator can use to trip the turbine by hand. Manually releasing the lever's latch causes the trip valve in the overspeed trip mechanism to shut and stops the turbine. Whenever the trip has been activated, either automatically or by hand, it must be reset manually before the turbine is put back into operation. Some turbines have additional protective devices that will automatically shut the turbine down if an unsafe operating condition develops. These protective devices are commonly triggered by conditions like low lube oil pressure, high bearing temperatures, or some other abnormal condition associated with operation of the turbine, the equipment driven by the turbine, or the system in which the turbine is used. Typically, such devices involve a solenoid trip that is operated by electrical inputs from the system that has developed the abnormal condition. In this example, a turbine drives a pump. If the pump's oil level drops below a certain point, a solenoid trip is activated to stop the turbine. This prevents the pump from being severely damaged by continuing to operate without proper lubrication. 
By now, you should have a good general understanding of the basic components and functions of a typical non-condensing steam turbine and its auxiliary systems. This would be a good time to look over the turbine you'll be operating in your facility and become familiar with its specific components. After you've done that, you'll be better prepared to look at some actual operation procedures. Also, before going any farther, take some time to review the material in your text and answer the questions there. Then, when you return, we'll begin to discuss turbine operation.